Terrapagos really, really needs it when it's going to be able, up against some of these more faster pieces on Alberto's side. So, well, what a way to kick things off here for Nick to have that Terrapagos next to that Whimsicott, but for Alberto, it is going to be that Urshifu Rapid Strike in the Iron Hands. Yeah, so if we immediately see some of those speed options, only one Whimsicott on the field, so Nick is the only player threatening Tailwind here, but Alberto has the Fake Out and the Choice Scarf on the other side to try to threaten damage back. Of course, a Surging Strikes into Tropicos with the Terra Shell still active is not going to be a, a KO threat, and so even if you disrupt the speed control and try to go out on the offense, Tropicos will probably still trade back well there, so you may be tempted to instead just Fake Out the Tropicos, break that Terra Shell, uh, and give Whimsicott the free turn instead. Um, no restricted Pokemon on the field yet for Alberto. Oftentimes, Maridon is led to get the Electro Strain back. Would have boosted Iron Hands here, and it can always just Volt Switch off the field. But Alberto recognizing that that can be a difficult spot when Whimsicott's there and can immediately threaten the speed advantage for Tropagos that puts Maridon kind of under fire. So a little bit safer lead here. Because Terrapagos just wants to retreat back because there is that threat of the fake out into even a close combat that would be able to take it out as well. So this Raging Bolt taking its place would be able to take it a little bit better, but also you are able to resist those surging strikes. That's going to be a U-turn, though. Breaking the Focus Sash of this Whimsicott also allows Alberto to pivot in, maybe a more useful pick. You talked about the Maridon be potentially being in the back here to help increase this Iron Hands with that uh, Quark Drive boost, but it is going to be the Whimsicott instead. So we've got mirrored Whimsicott on the field. Moonblast, though, Iron Hands with the Assault Vest is able to take that much better, but it's still going to do about 40% damage. Maybe getting a little bit of it back, though. Yeah, Drain Crunch will let it heal a little bit back, and two pretty small damage trades there. We get a Moon Blast for some damage, a Drain Punch for some damage, a U-turn for a little bit of damage, but nothing super consequential happens this turn. Whimsicott, a really great option to be able to pivot out into in the face of this Raging Bolt Whimsicott. Of course, immune to uh, Thunderclap as long as it is going with a status move, uh, and then immune to any Dragon moves from Raging Bolt as well. So it can really disrupt the Raging Bolt on the other side and can try to answer Tailwind if that's what Nick goes for. This Iron Hands is still also going to be a problem. This Assault Vest is going to make this Iron Hands so beefy against all of the other special attack pieces that Nick has. We've already seen the Terrapagos as well as this Raging Bolt, and there's still also the threat of the Chiyu too. Yeah, I do think I would also be careful of Iron Hands getting worn down. These are not the two Pokemon that Iron Hands is going to trade damage into best, and if it takes a lot of damage in this situation, it's going to have a lot harder time dealing with the Tropagos in the back as this Whimsicott goes for Tailwind and gets the speed in Nick's favor. Ooh, well, the Volt Switch into the Whimsicott on Alberto's side is also going to break its Focus Sash and provide another pivot to Nick, maybe feeling like this board state is a little bit better to bring that Tropagos in, or, as we can see, there is another threat that the Iron Hands would love to be in front of. Yeah, Iron Hands loves those two matchups back there. Does have to watch out for that ground trastalization on Chiyu with Terra Blast. So it de definitely more of a damage threat from Chiyu into Iron Hands than we're used to seeing. Uh, Nick taking his time here. This is a really important decision which these Pokemon are coming in. This team, uh, because it plays so offensively, it's often a little bit harder to find those right defensive pivots. You can see that first turn of defensive pivoting cost almost half of Raging Bolt and Whimsicott. You can't do that that many times. So it's a really consequential decision which attacker you're going to get on the field in this moment and try to grab the momentum of the match with. Well, it's nice because Nick did set up the Tailwind, so at least you know that you have the Trapagos under those uh, speed conditions, and even if Alberto was to match the Tailwind with his own Whimsicott, this Iron Hands is still going to move faster. But the Terrapagos is switching in to a Moonblast, so that Terra Shell is going to get broken and make this Trapagos even more vulnerable when the Drag Punch is across the way, and that Terrapagos just switches into a one-hit knockout. Yeah, just an absolutely massive turn. I think Alberto... Uh saw a vulnerable spot. The Raging Bolts on the other side can't protect itself is a threat that Alberto would be happy to attack into. We already know he has the Urshifu. If you get the Drain Punch and the Moon Blast into Raging Bolt, that's still a lot of damage and doing a really important threat. But when the two Pokemon in the back for Nick or Chiyu and the Tropicos, there's no safe switch into that either. And then because the Whimsicott went for Tailwind, that Volt Switch was the fastest thing moving. A minute came out before the Moon Blast from the Whimsicott on the other side, which allowed Terra Shell to get broken, which allowed Drain Punch to do so much damage, and really turned that turn into what could have been a small damage trade and just an absolutely punishing moment for Nick as he loses his restricted Pokemon before it even attacks once in this game. Yeah, it feels like such a main source of damage that's been completely removed, and even though this Chiyu does have that ground Terra, as you were pointing out, in front of the Pokemon that it would really love to see, 
you still have to struggle with the fact that there is a toy scarf rapid strike urshifu in the back that you're going to be vulnerable to yeah it does feel like there's some path for nick still in this game i do think that path starts with chiyu going ground type and becoming a ground attacker the urshifu can be limited with the raging bolt threatening thunderclaps out of the back and so you can see some path where nick has the right pokemon on the field at the right time to disrupt what alberto's trying to do but it's going to be a very tricky path to walk as alberto is also able to use his trastalization to make sure that that iron hands not vulnerable to a ground type trust uh terra blast and now that the trapicus is gone doesn't have to worry about a super effective terra star storm either is able to safely go for this trastalization that is the biggest problem when you're facing up into a trapicus is that you have to time that terrestrialization perfectly so you aren't going to get those super effective terra star storms but the terra blast even better way to use this terrestrialization defensively and that iron hands is going to be able to take that terra blast like a champ the whimsicott to double it up too is going to take the iron hands below 50 percent but it's still alive and well to be able to get this drain punch off and recover so much of that HP that even if you see that double up again, Iron Hands will likely survive that. Yeah, I think it would be a pretty close uh, damage roll there, but you can see just how much value Iron Hands is providing. Has already given a valuable drain punch into Raging Bolt that's going to make it easier for Urshifu to have a spot in this game later. And then, of course, picked up the KO and Trapico. Steals huge damage to Chiyu there. He's really the MVP of this game so far, and it's not the most valuable Pokemon for Alberto. It can have the most impact, but if when Alberto loses that Pokemon, he's still going to have that core offensive mode of what we expect to be the Maridon in that fourth slot in the back, and Whimsicott, and Choice Scarf for Shifu. And so when Iron Hands provides this much value, just kind of trading away its own health bar that is so much in Alberto's favor. Yeah, you've got two full health Pokemon in the back, and that's really scary to have to contend with. And as you're talking about Nick not being able to give up too many turns of repositioning, this Raging Bull is going to come back in to try to keep that Whimsicott for later. Also calling a switch that Alberto is going to make here with that Whimsicott also retreating into the back. That Urshifu going to take its place. Look at that HP. It feels really good to know that you have that full health Urshifu in the back. And the Terra Blast 2, if you didn't think it was going to take two hits before, without that double up, it's definitely going to survive that. And with the Drain Punch back, it just feels like it's a, a wall. You can't take it down. How are you going to deal with this, Ur uh, this Iron Hands? Yeah, it just keeps healing back. Nick trying to be one turn ahead there brings the Raging Bolt in because if Urshifu hits the field and is threatening an attack into Chiyu without Raging Bolt there to try to disrupt with Thunderclap, then uh, things look extremely difficult for Nick. So he tries to be one turn ahead, get Raging Bolt on the field, but Alberto is one turn ahead of that. Throws a Drain Punch into the Raging Bolt means it's down to just that low red health. It's going to be very easy for Alberto to find a window to take it down. And because Iron Hands only took one attack on that turn, heals back a lot of that just with the Drain Punch means that the damage really isn't mounting on Iron Hands. It still looks like with the right prediction, Alberto could get another attack with Iron Hands off and just keep mounting the damage. Yeah, like even if there was another Terra Blast coming that Iron Hands way, it's going to be able to take that. But the Whimsicott is going to reposition in now as the Archie goes for the Surging Strikes, not even going to call that with a Thunderclap. This Raging Bull is just going to take it, get taken down, even though it's going to resist these hits and had a pretty good chunk of HP there. Still not going to be able to survive that. So just like that, Nick is down to the final two Pokemon in this game number one, the Whimsicott and this Chiyu. Yeah, I think Alberto making a very safe play there. The Raging Bolt has two targets it would like to attack into, a Water-type Urshifu and a Water-type Iron Hands. But it can only attack into one of them. It could have been a Thunderclap into the Urshifu, but even if Urshifu goes down, that means Drain Punch is going to land and KO that Raging Bolt. But instead, the Raging Bolt likely clicks a move into the Iron Hands and just goes down to Surging Strike before it can even attack and makes this an even more impossible situation as Nick just is going to concede this game, move on to game two, try to find an easier path in a game where Tropicos doesn't just go down on us being threatened and fake out that can disrupt the Terra Shell and threaten damage from the partner is a big problem. And so Tropico's not led this time. Instead, it's the Gothitel on the field next to Raging Bull. Wow, this is going to be a switch up for both of our players, though. Alberto did not bring this Fluttermane to that first game, even though we didn't get a chance to see the fourth and final. But the Fluttermane in front of this Gothitel feels so nice when it's a ghost type. Yeah, so one of the big problems with Shadow Tag against Alberto's team is that there are two Volt Switches, one U-Turn and one Ghost Type. It could be that all four Pokemon Alberto brought have a way out of Shadow Tag. And that definitely these first two led on the field have a way out. The Fluttermane is a Ghost Type, is able to just switch out here if it wants to, but doesn't necessarily need to. It would love to fight against these two Pokemon. Isn't really threatened by that much damage from either of them and can trade a bunch of damage back. And they're two Pokemon that if Fluttermane can, you know, put a bunch of damage in a Raging Bolt and there is an Urshifu in the back, that starts to look a lot easier. If you can put a lot of damage into Gothitelle, then you can take away that control option. And of course, Iron Hands doesn't have the same kind of damage trade uh, 
really vulnerable targets that it would like, but still, putting uh, Drain Punches into Raging Bolt would be really valuable. For, for this turn, just going to flinch after a fake out from a Gothitelle. Ooh, well, Fluttermane is actually going to go for the taunt into the Gothitelle, so it is going to be able to shut down its own helping hand and taunt as the Volt Switch from the Raging Bolt does do a little bit of damage there to that Fluttermane and is going to allow Nick to get another reposition, but this is where things started to look a little dicey there for Nick in that game number one, where you have this really big decision to make, knowing that your team wants to play more offensively than this. Yeah, at least this time, you don't have to worry that there's damage coming into that slot. Iron Hands will just flinch at the end of this turn, and Fluttermane has already attacked. Tropicos might like to come in here. You can keep the Iron Hands from just switching out, and of course, if it tries to Volt Switch out, it'll be the last thing moving, so you'll definitely get an opportunity for Tropicos to attack into that slot. Maybe the idea for Nick was to get Tropicos in and go for a big helping hand, Choice Specs, Terra Star Storm, and deal a ton of damage into Iron Hands, but the Gothitelle being taunted means that there's not quite that same damage threat, and you can't afford to have like a Moon Blast Drain Punch combination into Tropicos that just takes it down, and so instead it's Whimsicott coming onto the field next to Gothitelle. Well, you know, there is an attacking move available for the Gothitelle outside of the fake out. It's a foul play, and if there's anything that this Iron Hands is, it can be a beefy attacker. So maybe just do a little bit of damage to it. Yeah, those are really poor <laughs> damage traits when you <laughs> resist that foul play. It is a lot of attack, but it's not the boosted attack yet. No more I don't know electric terrain. So there's a, there are damage traits that probably just get drain punched back. The good news is that these, it's a very passive situation for Nick. Gothitelle and Whimsicott aren't going to be threatening a ton of damage. They aren't going to be solving this problem, but they aren't the biggest, uh, most valuable Pokemon on his side either, and so taking damage into them isn't the most, like, critical failure. Yeah, well, I mean, the Gothitelle gets to escape for this turn. The Raging Bolt now going to re-enter the field, but the Swimsicott going for Encore means that this Fluttermane is going to get locked into going for that taunt. Not the best of targets either, like the Raging Bolt is going to have all attacks, but you know, at least you know that on, you're on Nick's side, you've started to whittle away at some of these options and maybe are able to predict a switch from this Flutter main if you think that Alberto wants to reset that taunt. I do think this is kind or of the encore. sign of the problem with the kind of passive position that Nick was in. Whimsicott could get an Encore into Flutter main, keep it from attacking, um, but all that really happens on that turn is an Iron uh, Hands landing Drain Punch into Raging Bolt, picking up pretty valuable damage. Whittling down that Raging Bolt is really key for Alberto because it stands up so well against so many of his Pokemon. And Whimsicott does... A Whimsicott gets the Encore, but Fluttermane doesn't get to attack that turn. Whimsicott doesn't really get to attack that turn either. It's just a kind of a traded passive turn. Both players not really left doing much with those Pokemon. Both may switch out this turn. Whimsicott may be able to start building Moon Blasts into Iron Hands, but those are just things that can get easily Drain Punch healed back over time, and Nick can stay stuck in this kind of passive position, or is just happy to taunt this Whimsicott and leave it just Moon Blasting for the rest of its time on the field. Yeah, well, you know, Nick didn't fall for that, so at least the Moon Blast is going to be able to land into the Iron Hands gonna do a nice chunk of damage as the Volt switch into the Flutter main. Might even be a three hit knockout at this point, but more importantly, you get a chance to get reset this Gothitelle. You have fake out pressure if you want to, or you can bring in your big damage dealer and the Terrapagos. The Whimsicott is not able to go for the Tailwind though, which is the hardest part. Yeah, so there'll be no speed advantage uh, easily gained for Nick. Uh, the Terrapagos comes back on the field. Drain Punch is going to go into Terra Shell and be resisted, but still is pretty valuable chip damage back, especially because the Terra Shell is now broken. Yeah, because now at this point too, like if you can't hit the 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 Tailwind, this Fluttermane is also uh, not a, not a huge problem because it's also still encored into Taunt, but it's going to expire in a couple of turns, and Alberto still has options in the back. There could be a really critical damage calculation here. If Terra Starstorm plus Moon Blast is enough damage to pick up Iron Hands, this is the kind of position where the offense can just go from zero to 60 and overwhelming so fast. But if it misses that KO and Iron Hands elects to stay on the field for Alberto, the Drain Punch back would heal off so much of the damage you've done and deal a ton of really valuable damage into Trapagos. It'll be interesting if Alberto wants to opt in to that damage trade or just switch in, but there's nothing that switches in easily to a Terra Star Storm plus a Moon Blast. So this could be a really pivotal moment. This is Nick's opportunity he's built over several turns to go out on the offense. Flutter main forced to switch because all it can do is taunt this turn against an already taunted Pokemon and a Choice Specs holder. And so it's Whimsicott switching in to take this combination attack. Well, it's nice, too, because you know that that Whimsicott's going to be able to stick around with that Focus Sash. As long as it doesn't get doubled into, it should be able to stick around. But Nick is going to go for that Stellar Terrestrialization onto the Tropagos. It's time to see the big turtle, see what it's all about. 
and it's definitely going to be able to do some damage into both of these Pokemon, but will it be enough? As the Whimsicott goes for the Moonblast and the Iron Hands, it's able to chip it down to about 25%, but with the Terra Star Sword follow-up here from this Terrapagos, is it a Assault that's going to actually keep this Iron Hands alive? And the answer to that is no! Brings the Whimsicott down to its Focus Sash as well, and the biggest problem for Nick in that game number one is off the field. Yeah, that damage looked like it was way more than enough. The Moonblast being super effective means that the Whimsicott can have a pretty important offensive uh, potential in this match, especially because the Iron Hands is such a critical target. And that made that double up look so easy. Uh, Nick takes the Whimsicott down to one HP, gets rid of the Iron Hands, uh, really valuable turn that he spent several turns positioning to find his way into with the damage built up a little bit on the Iron Hands and not, no worry that the Tropagos would have just gone down on that turn. But of course, taking a KO just means that Maridon enters the field for the first time for Alberto, ready to try to trade damage in this position. And it's tough because the Terrapagos already terrestrialized. Had the Terrapagos been able to terrestrialize while that Electro Train was active on the field, it would have been able to remove that. So now this Maridon, not many ways that you're able to shut down that electric terrain that Mer this Maridon is going to get the boost from. Yeah, it's going to still pump out that massive damage, and that taunt from Fluttermane into Whimsicott a few turns ago also limits Nick's options. Can't try to grab the speed advantage there, and so instead it's just the Gothitel switching in for Tropicos, recognizing that Tropicos was not positioned to be able to take an attack from this now Terra Electric Maridon that's going doesn't have the choice specs damage, but it's still pumping out just enormous amounts of damage. Yeah, you still get the beefed up Electro Drift on top of the Electric Terrain stab, the stab on the Pokemon plus that Electric Terror, and that Gothitel just gets taken it out in one hit oh my goodness this is where alberto saw the tides be able to swing in his favor and he's gonna go out with a home run this moon blast too just to be able to help uh, get this whimsicott whittled down in hp it's gonna at least break the focus sash there uh, and maybe even better alberto now has a free switch back into the flutter yeah, Fluttermane going to enter the field, already has its booster energy used back up, but is still going to come out and be relevant in this game. This is what we touched on in game one, where Iron Hands can feel like the raid boss. It can feel like it's so difficult for Nick to find a way to take it off the field, but it isn't actually the most crucial Pokemon on Alberto's side of the field. It isn't the core piece of that offensive attack. That's the Maridon Whimsicott, and in this case, the Fluttermane is the second attacker with it. And so when so many resources, so much time positioning is spent to take down Iron Hands, it just opens things up for Maridon to take that big one-hit KO onto the Gothitelle as it switches in. This Maridon also, because it doesn't have the choice specs, isn't locked into an electric move, can just go threaten the Raging Bolt and threaten the KO right now if it wants to. What's nice too is that the Encore, uh, uh, the taunt on the Whimsicott did expire as well. So Nick is free to go for that speed control that is going to really help to make sure that this Terrapagos can still stand tall against something like this Maridon. Absolutely. It also means that tra electric terrestrialization from Maridon could be costly. It means the Terra Star Storms are now super effective out of the back. Ooh, and it's not even going to be the Thunderclap. With that Tailwind, that Raging Bolt is going to be faster. Not even opting to try to play that mind game of whether this Fluttermane would end up going for something like the Taunt. But the Draco Meteor into the Raging Bolt is going to be enough for that one-hit knockout. But here's the problem. Maridon does not have any partners left. It cannot switch off the field, so it's going to have to take that special attack drop. It's going to be stuck on the field with no partners, with a super effective Terra Star Storm on its way in and no way to deal enough damage into this Tropicos. And so Nick, gets the KO on Iron Hands, has to give up a big KO in return because of the positional advantage Alberto regained after that KO, but it was just too little too late for Alberto because then next to Maraid on and focus on that angle. If you bring the Fluttermane again, I wonder if you opt to just lock into some type of damage at the very beginning instead, knowing that the Encore is something that this Whimsicott is going to threaten, but both Alberto and Nick once again switching it up here with the Chiyu on the field for both of them. Yeah, there were no Chiyus in the last game. There are suddenly two Chiyus <laughs> on the field ready to fight each other in this game. Whimsicott only on Nick's side of the field means the speed advantage is his if he wants it, uh, but it actually starts with the speed advantage because of the choice scarf on Chiyu as well. Uh, Fluttermane and Chiyu, though, two bigger attackers on Alberto's side of the field. The KOs are there uh, for Alberto if he can survive the turn. Um, the Fluttermane might be in KO range from a Choice Scarf Overheat, uh, depending on how it's trained, uh, which would then limit just one attack from Alberto's side of the field, and probably with a Focus Sash and Whimsicott and Chiyu's typing mean that the Chiyu on the other side can't actually take a KO. But of course, it can also just start to snarl and reduce the outgoing uh, damage from Nick's side of the field and try to more slowly approach this part. Uh, 
for getting to this game, but that might require a Flutter Main Protect, which can just be on court. So a very tricky little opening here. And over he could also just miss. Let's not forget that that is not a 100% accurate move, and that could be devastating. But the Chi Yu is going to use its glasses, hit the overheat, and the crit might not have mattered. We know what this Chi Yu can do, especially when Beads of Ruin is active with those overheats. Wild. The snarl in response is going to help limit that special attack a little bit from that Chi Yu, but I feel like it got what it wanted. A huge damage threat out of the way. Yeah, I think that's a really strong start for Nick. Establishes the speed control with Tailwind. Even though he didn't need it in that position, it means that you're less likely to get pinned a turn or two from now because Tailwind will be there and ready on his side of the field. And yeah, you give up a Snarl, it breaks the Focus Sash and lowers Chi Yu's special attack even further, but Chi Yu already overheated. It wasn't going to be really wanting to stay on the field and continue attack from that position anyway. So if you're going to be forced to switch Chi Yu out, the extra Snarl probably doesn't matter too much. But this is Alberto's time to fight back. This is now a pretty passive position for Nick. Chi Yu is going to need to switch out to be able to accomplish much offensively. And if there's not a good switch in into that Chi Yu spot, that could be a very vulnerable position. Of course, Whimsicott also vulnerable to just a Heat Wave from the other side. I mean, if you throw a Heat Wave and Drain Punch double up, where Heat Wave is threatening KO into Whimsicott, Drain Punch throwing a KO into Chi Yu, and there aren't good switch ins, that early advantage of just taking down the Flutter main can get evened out so quickly here. I mean, you could also just kind of do that regardless if you think that the Chi Yu is going to switch out or not, because that Terrapagos might not want to take that either. Um, but as we head into this next turn, I feel like this is where we need to continue to see some of Nick's patience doesn't want to give up some of that momentum right away with making a big pivot or a big change up. You also just need to establish chip into Iron Hand. So even though this overheat isn't at full strength, it's still a little bit of chip, right? And if the goal is just to establish enough chip that Terra Star Storm is now a KO, well, that's definitely making progress there, and this Moon Blast making even more progress. Yeah, I mean, that double up is going to do huge amounts of damage. And the Snarl from the TU, it's just going to help to continue to cover for any switch-ins that might happen. If the Terrapico switches in, you're able to get a nice special attack drop on that. But maybe giving Nick what he wanted. That Drain Punch is going to help to heal up the Iron Hands. But more critically, this Chi Yu already wanted to leave the field, especially at minus six. So now you get a free switch in regardless. Yeah, I think this actually plays out really well for Nick. The Iron Hands started that turn at 100% health, is now at about 50%, is easily in KO range from a Moon Blast plus Terra Star Storm double up, which is kind of what spelled the beginning of the end for Alberto in that last game. And the Chiyu was not the most valuable Pokemon at that point, uh, and Nick recognizing it had more, uh, the, the cost of trying to save it by switching it out was more than it was still worth at that point. The Chiyu on the other side is just locked into the Choice Spec Snarl. Um, is it going to be able to pick up a KO on Whimsicott? And it's just going to, you know, get a valuable Terra Shell uh, break on the Trapagos if the Trapagos doesn't just terrestrialize itself this turn and threaten uh, as much damage as possible coming on the other side. But it really feels like now the momentum is in Nick's side. Um, again, because of the KO taken uh, by Alberto, right? You you have some, a little bit of momentum shift because Fluttermane goes down and Alberto has the two attackers coming in. But Nick is able to just trade the Chiyu going down on his side of the field to reestablish that momentum, have his restricted Pokemon in the position it wants to be in, uh, and make things look really difficult for Alberto. Of course, there's also only one Pokemon left unrevealed for Alberto. That means there cannot both be a Tailwind waiting and a Maridon waiting. Should be just a Maridon without speed control in the end game for Alberto. Ooh, well, here's a really interesting lock-in. As we do see the Maridon now take that Chi Yu's place, it's going to help to set up the electric terrain for this Iron Hands, give it a little bit of that Cork Drive boost, and it is going to end up giving over an attack boost. So nice way to be able to boost up a Drain Punch or something if you're able to help break that Terra Shell. Now don't even have to do that as this Terra Shift is going to activate. You're going to see that big turtle hit the field. But more critically, this is what we were talking about in game number two. Maridon just switched in. It set the electric terrain. And with this terrestrialization to the Stellar Terra type and Terraform Zero activating, the electricity is gone. There, there goes your terrain. And there goes the Quark Drive as well as the Hadron Engine boost. Yeah, Maridon just switching in at such an unfortunate time here, but does not take a Terra Star Storm. Instead, it's Earth Power locked into to KO Iron Hands. The turn doesn't go as disastrously for Alberto as it could have, but still looks like it might have gone so disastrously that it's going to be really difficult for Alberto to find a way back in. Maridon switches in and immediately loses its electric terrain, uh, and Iron Hands just goes down on that turn, locking Alberto with just these final two Pokemon on that field. That means there will never be electric terrain. There's no way to get out and back in. And Nick still has three Pokemon, the Whimsicott and Trapagos combination, able to threaten so much damage into the Maridon and Chiyu, and then one unrevealed Pokemon in the back that could help close out this game. 
Yeah, and I think this is such a critical protect here for Nick because as you got a chance to see, there's one turn of Tailwind left, and this Terrapagos is really going to need that speed control in order to make sure that it is outspeeding this Maridon. But can this Maridon actually take this hit? One of the nice things about locking into Earth Power is you know that the Earth Power is going to be super effective into the Iron Hands, the Maridon, and the Chi Yu if they don't, uh, and even if the Maridon terrestrializes, still going to hit it super effective. So it's a really smart lock-in. Yeah, Nick recognizing that with one unrevealed Pokemon left and Maridon not shown, that it had to be that Pokemon. And so the three that were left were, like you mentioned, the Chiyu, the Iron Hands, and the Maridon all weak to Earth Power. Uh, the Chiyu is going to terrestrialize out of its weakness to Earth Power. That was Alberta's one way to get one Pokemon that isn't weak to that Choice Specs Earth Power on the field. Um, but it's going to mean uh, Maridon is left hanging here. Maridon's left hanging, but and, and maybe this Terrapago is a little bit more vulnerable, but it is going to just go for the Protect. So a smart call here, knowing that the Terrapagos is threatening such a super effective Earth Power, will be able to protect itself from that, and it's going to carve out an opportunity for this Chi Yu to do something impactful as the Heat Wave, the Whimsicott, is going to be able to protect itself, but can it hit this Terrapagos? And yes, it does. It's going to do about 50% there, which is huge. Gets the burn, maybe putting a timer on this Terrapagos, but... It feels good to get that damage down. It does, but I think Alberto was looking for a little bit more there, recognizing that maybe the one path back into this game is Maridon protecting itself while Chiyu KOs Whimsicott uh, before a second Tailwind can go up. But Nick, smart enough to not let that happen, is able to protect or can now get a Tailwind and an Earth Power and, and keep trying to pump the damage into Maridon. Now, if Heat Wave just comes out and KOs these two Pokemon, it's going to be down to what is left in the back for Nick. If it's the Raging Bolt like we've seen in the other games, well, that can probably win an in-game against a Ghost uh, Chiyu. Uh, with Heat Wave, but either of the other two Pokemon are going to have a lot more difficulty. For sure. And, and so, like, you can still see Nick Tana taking his time, but it feels like, uh, to me, just set up the speed control and just make sure that this Terrapagos is going to be able to at least KO one Pokemon. But you have to choose, and you have to choose wisely. This Marino's going to try to go for the double protect, but it doesn't get it. So this Earth Hour is going to uh, lock into that Maridon after we see this Tailwind go through. But is it going to be enough to actually get the KO here? Maridon uh, has a good amount of natural bulk, but I think when you're looking at a like, Choice Specs Terrapagos, it's just too powerful, especially next to a Pokemon. It's going to help lower that Maridon's special defense. But the Heat Wave is going to be able to knock out both the Whimsicott and the Terrapagos. So what is in the back here for Nick, and is Alberto happy with what's in the back? Yeah, I think... Uh, Alberto right to go for the double protect there. Uh, right on just going to go down otherwise, and definitely a path to winning this game is getting the double protect, Heat Wave taking those two KOs, but it's Gothitel in the back. This is going to be a really interesting now in game. The Raging Bolt would have been uh, a lot easier. The Gothitel probably going to get two it KO'd by Heat Wave. Foul Play, I imagine, does not want it KO Chi Yu back. Uh, this could be a situation where the exact uh, stats of the Chi Yu are become relevant. Yeah. But I have to imagine that uh, even with max attack, this Chi Yu, yeah, not okay. even a two-hit KO, just safely able to take that. Um, and the Tailwind, uh, ooh, that Heat Wave does so much, almost picks up the KO. The Foul Play not able to get the KO even with- But it's with got a hit. Okay, I was nervous for a second there with a the little bit of a lag, but it did hit. The Heat Wave connects, and Alberto Lara brings back the set after that loss in game number two to take it. Yeah, just such 